What's going on everybody and welcome back to Bourbon of the Week. My name's Chris, I'm gonna be your host for today and today we have a bottle called Hill Rock, not to be confused with Rock Hill Farms. When I first started hunting whiskey, I heard about Rock Hill Farms. I went out, I saw Hill Rock, I thought Rock Hill, Hill Rock, gotta be the same thing. It's not the same thing, but let's talk about this bottle real quick. So this bottle coming out of Hill Rock Estate Distilleries in New York. We do know it's 92.6 proof. We don't have an age statement on this, although everything says about six years. We don't know the mash bill, although I did see one online that said 63% corn, 37% rye. Those are the only two grains used in this. And that's a high rye mash bill. And it's finished in 20-year-old Oloroso sherry casks. Now we are gonna talk about the Oloroso sherry casks as well as the New York influence on this when we get to our bourbon bomb of the week. But before we get to all of that, everybody knows Time for the traditional sip. Cheers, y'all. Tastes like New York. Let me start off this video by saying I'm not the biggest sherry finish guy when it comes to whiskey. I'm not even really the biggest wine finish guy when it comes to whiskey. I don't drink wine. There's a reason I don't drink wine because I don't like wine. So why would I like something when it's finished in wine? I will say there are a few that are better than others. I have like a Thomas Moore, the Cabernet Sauvignon. That was pretty bad. I have the PX Sherry Casks coming from Rabbit Hole, probably one of my favorites when it comes to an actual wine finish on something. But let's try this one out. Let's get into it. You know the rules, price, taste, drinkability. We always start with drinkability. How much ethanol kick is behind 92.6 proof. Let's try it out. Yeah, I mean, for 92.6 proof, there's no ethanol kick on this at all, and I wasn't really expecting any. I've been drinking a lot of higher proof stuff recently, which may help this out when it comes to 92 proof versus like 115 or 120 proof, but I will say I was expecting a lot more spice with 37% rye, and when we talk about taste, maybe I'll talk about how that sherry influence kind of tones down that rye, but straight drinkability on this at 92.6 proof, it's pretty fantastic. One more sip, we'll give it a score. Yeah, maybe a little bit of heat right on the back of the throat, but there's nothing crazy about this. I will say this, when I first started drinking whiskey, 92.6 proof would have a kick to it, no matter what you were drinking, right? It could have been the smoothest whiskey or the most harsh whiskey, but 92.6 proof has a kick to it. But once you start moving up into those 115s, 120s, and consistently drinking higher proof stuff, this stuff almost tastes like water. So it's tough to go back to some of my old videos and talk about, oh wow, this 86 proof really had some burn to it. Or wow, this 125 proof is literally not drinkable. Because now we're at the point right now where we're tolerating 146 proof stuff like Jack Daniels Coy Hill and 115 proof stuff tastes like 90 proof stuff. So I will say, if you're newer to your bourbon journey and you're trying 92.6 proof and I'm telling you that it's easy to drink and you still get a little bit of ethanol kick behind it, give it some time to open up, try some higher proof stuff now that you're into that 90 to 100 proof range, and then come back and revisit some of these. Let's give this a score. I'm going to say like an 8.94 when it comes to drinkability on this. It's definitely not in the nines because of that lower proof, but at the same time, it's higher than eight. So 8.94 is a fair spot. And up next, we're gonna get the taste on this. And I gotta say, I think that's where this bottle's gonna struggle for me personally. There's nothing wrong with the flavor profile on this. There's nothing bad about it, right? I can go through all the flavors that I do get. It's just not my personal preference. So let's do that real quick. First things first, and I don't know where this is coming from. It's only six years old, but I get a lot of tannins, a lot of oakiness, and a lot of dryness on the end of this. Not that it's a bad thing. Again, a lot of people like that tobacco, that leather, that oaky note, and that dryness when drinking this. I think this would be a great whiskey to sip by a fire with a cigar going, but for me personally, it dries out my mouth just a little too much, and I'm not a big fan of that. Up next, and I kind of already talked about it, I don't get as much rye spice as I was expecting for a 37% rye. Now I'm kind of thinking at the beginning that wasn't a bad thing, but I think it's just because of that sherry influence kind of overtaking this glass. I don't want to say it's overwhelming because it's definitely well balanced. That's the one thing that I will say about this when it comes to taste. It's balanced. It gives you a little bit of everything along the way, but I just feel like I was looking for a little bit more rye. It's not quite there. And at 37%, I kind of want more of that rye influence when I'm picking up more of that sherry, which again, wines just aren't my favorite. So picking up more of that sherry versus more of that bourbon doesn't really do it for me that much. And the last thing I'll say about this glass is it's not very complex. And complexity isn't always a good thing, right? I know bottles out there that have 25 different flavor profiles on them, but they're not very well blended. This bottle right here is very well blended. You get that sherry on the front, you get the rye in the middle, although I wish I got a little bit more of that, and then you get the age on the end. It's just the fact that I'm not a big sherry fan and I'm not a big age fan. So when you have two of the three being those factors, I don't love it that much. Let's take one more sip and we'll give it a score when it comes to taste. 
Listen, I could definitely see somebody enjoying this bottle right here. It's just not for me. If you like that oaky, smoky taste, you like that wine finish, you're going to absolutely love this bottle. I will say I have to give it a pretty low score. I always do this. I always tell you it's my personal preference when it comes to these scores. It has nothing to do with the whiskey. But for me, I got to go like maybe low sevens, high six. Let's go like 6.83 when it comes to taste on this. So last but not least, we're going to get a price on this. And this bottle comes in at $90. Now, we talked last week when we did the Barrel Vantage talking about that $90 price point and other things in it. I use Booker's as an example. I think Booker's is overpriced. I also think that this Hill Rock is just a little bit overpriced because I don't love it, right? If you love this taste, $90 might be a steal for you. But now I have Barrel Vantage in my mind, which is 116 proof versus 92 proof. Not that proof matters because it's proof down to a certain point where they want it to be a certain flavor profile. Profile. But I will say when it comes to the money aspect of things, it definitely makes a difference. So comparing this to something like Booker's, something like Barrel Vantage, I don't love it at $90. Let's take one more sip and we'll give it a score. It's just hard at $90 because at that price point, you can start to talk about how many times you can buy one of your favorite $30 or $40 bottles. And if you can get your favorite bottle three times or your favorite bottle two times versus this bottle once and you don't love it, it's definitely a tough pill to swallow. So at $90, I'm going to go like low seven, 7.15 when it comes to price on this. But listen, let's send it over this week's Bourbon Bomb of the Week and learn a little bit more about Olorosa Sherry Casks and a little bit more about New York's influence on this bottle right here. So you may or may not know this, but in the 1800s, New York actually grew over 50% of the nation's barley and rye. The soil was great. The grains were great, which obviously meant distilleries were going to flourish and over 1,000 distilleries popped up in New York. So obviously whiskey and gin were everywhere up until you guessed it, Prohibition came and shut it all down. But Hill Rock is trying to bring it back to New York with their own grains. They actually restored a grain merchant's house from 1806, and that's the distillery they use today. So I was going to stop my bourbon bomb of the week there until I did a deep dive into Olorosa Sherry. Now, we talked about how this is Solera aged, right? One barrel at the bottom is filled by barrels above it. The oldest juice is in the bottom. As you dispense that, it fills in from the barrels above. That's what they do at Hill Rock, and that's also what they do with Olorosa Sherry wine. Now, because Olorosa Sherry Wine uses Solera aging, these casks rarely make it out of this pyramid scheme. They basically stay there until they deteriorate. The only way you got sherry cask finished stuff before this was in 1981. They used to ship stuff with barrels. They didn't ship it already bottled. They shipped the barrels of sherry to whatever country they wanted to send it to. Once they got it, rather than shipping back a barrel full of air, they would fill it with whiskey. They would ship it back to Spain. And now you have sherry cask finished whiskey. But in 1981, they switched this process where you now have to bottle it before you send it out. So that means all the shipping containers that used to be Olorosa sherry casks aren't coming back with whiskey in them because there's none of those going out. So what happened to the Olorosa sherry casks? Well, basically, they live in this pyramid scheme until they deteriorate. So how do we get Olorosa sherry finished whiskey? What they do is they actually fill up barrels with Olorosa sherry wine. They take that for 12 to 30 months, depending on how long they want to do it. They dump it into another barrel. So they reuse the same wine over and over again to season these casks. Then once the wine is unusable, they turn it into vinegar. So they don't even drink the stuff at the end of it. This blew my mind. There is such a high demand for Olorosa sherry casks that they are reusing wine over and over again to quote unquote season barrels. And that's how we get Olorosa sherry finished barrels. But and there's a big but here. Hill Rock says that theirs is 20 years old and everything I've read said it's 12 to 24 months. I'm sorry, 12 to 30 months for this seasoning process. So I don't know if they have something stashed away since 1981 that they've been holding on to or if somehow they're paying extra to get these barrels from this pyramid scheme out and to their distillery. So it's very interesting to see and maybe I'm just wrong on this. So again, I wanna know in the comment section below if you know anything about this, I would love to know. Let's get back to our score though. But listen, if you've made it this far in this video, make sure you click that like and that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. This bottle came in at a 7.64. A great spot, probably not. Kind of carried by drinkability on this as well. But again, if you enjoy this bottle, if you've had this bottle before and you enjoy it, I completely understand. There's nothing off-putting about the flavor profile on this. It's just not for me. If you're looking for your first Oloroso Sherry experience, this might be a good bottle to pick up. Again, $90 is a little bit expensive, but there's not a lot of heat on this. Maybe you're newer to the whiskey world. I would definitely recommend this for somebody like that. But a 7.64 is where this bottle is going to fall.
But listen, that's where I'm going to leave you for today. Make sure you check me out on Instagram at Bourbon of the Week. Go click that follow button over there. We're pushing 7,000 followers on Instagram now. Absolutely crazy. Link in the description below to our Patreon page. We have a lot of cool benefits just for patrons, as well as our Discord link in the description below as well. Come chat with us 24-7. Please don't drink and drive. Always drink responsibly and stay healthy, stay happy, stay drinking. Cheers, y'all. Solera.